In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello again, everybody, and welcome today to our Mass for Thursday of the sixth week in Ordinary Time. And so, my brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Reading today is taken from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person with shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say, sit here please, while you say to the poor one, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor, are not the rich oppressing you? And do they themselves not haul you off to court? Is it not they who blaspheme the noble name that was invoked over you? However, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin, and are convicted by the law as transgressors. The word of the Lord. Response is, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly, and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. 
So in our uh, readings today, we continue with uh, the letter of St. James with this really, um, as I mentioned earlier, really pointed questions and really concise questions to get us to uh, think about what we're doing and whether or not we're really following what Jesus tells us to do. And in our reading today at the start, we have a situation that I'm sure um, we've all fallen into at one point or another, that in our assembly or really in any place, excuse me, in a, or in any other place, but especially in our assembly, we see someone with gold rings and fine clothes come in, and then a little bit after that, or at the same time, there's a person who is dressed nowhere near as well, uh, come in as well. And the tendency would be to go approach the person or to think subtly, uh, subtly that, oh, we want to go approach the person with the fine clothes rather than the person um, who appears on the outside to not have as much money. And you tell the poor person to go, just kind of go over there into the corner. Now we all know that this is not what uh, Jesus is calling us to do, this is not what we ought to be doing, yet we all fall into this trap at one point or another. And as the author puts very succinctly, have, when you do this, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? What is the goal of doing this? Why are we making these distinctions? It also may be worth remembering as well that uh, sometimes the person who is dressed really well is not quite as wealthy as it seems, and the person who is dressed maybe not so well maybe has a lot more money and riches uh, than it may seem as well. But the point is, is uh, mainly that we are doing what the author says here in making distinctions, which then leads to evil designs. And to ask ourselves, when are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And what do we need to do really to prevent ourselves from doing this? And then we have in our gospel, um, again, another really pointed question from Jesus to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? And Peter answers very clearly and also succinctly, you are the Christ. So it may be worth a point of prayer is that it is really on a regular basis to ask ourselves this question. From, imagine Jesus, imagine we're in this situation, right? And imagine Jesus turning to us and saying, who do you say that I am? And to be able to answer that question uh, succinctly and clearly and to have a really firm idea of who we think Jesus is. And if we don't have a firm idea, to really work on getting a firm idea and a, firm, a more firm understanding of who Jesus is for us. So let us now offer our prayers and petitions to God. We pray for all those who are searching for something in their life, that they may find what the Lord is calling them to. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our community here, for those who worship here, and for those who are involved here, for them and their intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those um, who have died recently, for the repose of their souls and the consolation of their families, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for uh, the parish here, uh, and also the success, the continued success of the Renew My Church, for this let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for the intentions um, of those watching this Mass, which we offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. And good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.